There is no doubt that Persona 5 is a character-driven game. The core appeal can sometimes hinge on the relationships that the player develops with the fictional people in the story. And when it comes to the ensemble cast in Persona 5, I think few characters draw as much interest as the traitor amongst the group. His dual life as the detective prince and a rampant criminal seem to have captured the hearts of thousands, and it's easy to see why. For a game that layers itself so densely with theming, symbolism, and subtext, Akechi sticks out as a particularly saturated example. We see all aspects of his personality reflected across his design, personas, and actions. So today, I want to really dig deep into how the game uses the personas, Robin Hood, Loki, and Harrowward, to hint at Akechi's true nature, and why it works so well. Going chronologically, the first persona that we see Akechi use is Robin Hood. Coincidentally, I also just released a deep dive into Robin Hood last week, covering his design and inspiration, so if you want a closer look into the historical references to this persona, feel free to check out that video. Link will be in the description and in a card. For those who haven't seen the video, though, I'll give a brief summary here as some understanding is necessary for this video. Robin Hood is a persona comprised of symbols. Everything in his design is some sort of reference or callback to a powerful cultural touchstone that represents justice and heroism. But what exactly does that symbolism have to do with Akechi's personality? Well, Robin Hood, as we already established, is an uncharacteristically good persona. Everything about him is meant to instill trust and goodwill in those who interact with it. In this sense, it shares a common goal with Akechi in the real world. IRL Akechi is deceiving his fans, the police, and the Phantom Thieves into thinking he is a hero working towards a lawful good ideal. This is obviously not the case, and over the course of the game, we come to see that the Akechi we knew was little more than a cleverly crafted front constructed to hide his more sinister intentions. Almost everything he does is carefully chosen in order to keep his lies straight and keep suspicion away from him. And this meticulous lie is reflected in Robin Hood. Visually speaking, everything in Robin Hood's design can be traced back to some sort of powerful symbol of justice or heroism. Just the name Robin Hood itself, amongst the general population, brings a certain emotion to mind. While one could argue that there are historical accounts of Robin Hood acting as an anti-hero, the overwhelming majority of people are not so invested into the nitty-gritty, and on any level of significance, he is perceived as a paragon rather than a renegade. We also see Superman referenced in this design, and despite Zack Snyder's best efforts to make Superman edgy and cool, he's still one of the most distilled and pure forms of heroism in the modern cultural discussion. These symbols, however, are no more inherent to Akechi than the images I chose for this video are inherent to my hard drive. Just like this picture of Robin Hood, the symbols and imagery present in his design were deliberately crafted in order to convey a specific message that must be conveyed properly, lest Akechi risks being caught. What makes Robin Hood so great is that he shows us the persona of the Detective Prince, Robin Hood is the face that Akechi puts on when he's in the public eye trying to prove his righteousness to those around him. And that strong, fervent desire to fool those people was enough to create an entire persona of deception. It is obvious that Akechi is no hero, and despite how much Robin Hood wants you to believe otherwise, his next persona tells a very different story. Loki, as I'm sure you already know, is Akechi's second persona, and what we first think to be his true persona. However, the existence of Harrowward insinuates that his true persona lays somewhere in between Robin Hood and Loki, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, Loki is the persona that represents Akechi's darker side. All of the horrible crimes he commits and the mental shutdowns we see were perpetrated by Akechi using this persona. It stands to reason, then, that Loki would take on a very different design from Robin Hood in order to reflect these emotions, and that is exactly what we see. Loki is Robin Hood's polar opposite. Where Robin Hood has vibrant color, Loki has a monochrome striped pattern. Where Robin Hood represents heroes, Loki represents chaos and tricksters. Think tricksters along the lines of THE Joker, and not Joker Joker. Basically, Loki is the chaos to Robin Hood's order, and we see this reflected in a few ways. First, through his visuals, and second, through his moveset. Now, Loki's design is predominantly characterized by black and white erratic stripes constantly moving over his body. He sports hoof-like feet, which are often associated with more devilish or malevolent beings in many types of mythology, but admittedly, that may be a bit of a stretch, as this is something not super common in Norse mythology. Moving up from the legs, however, we see long black braids that fade to red on the end. These braids complement the overall black and white color scheme, which has completely dropped the blue and gold from Robin Hood. Finally, he is never seen without his massive red sword that looks like it was ripped right out of a game like Doom Eternal. 
The handle is chaotic and twisted, which is a rather fitting motif for this persona and its owner. When put all together, this design just emanates chaos and strong emotion. The stripes we see constantly moving across its body are reminiscent of the wraps that car manufacturers use on cars in production to keep people from seeing their true design in detail. Now, whether this is accidental or on purpose, I think it's fitting, as deception is a massive part of Akechi's personality. We also see some of Loki's true nature reflected in the stats screen. There he sits proudly atop his burning sword with an air of confidence and mischief befitting of a trickster god. These visuals are far more sinister looking than that of Robin Hood, and this is done to convey the much more unhinged and unfiltered Akechi that we see while this is his active persona. The confusing lines, the dark high contrast color scheme, the complete lack of all heroic symbolism clues us into the fact that we are seeing a very different Akechi than we saw before. These design choices also convey the idea that Loki is a persona far less deliberate than Robin Hood. Now what I mean by this is that Loki is a byproduct of the extreme emotions and conflict that Akechi is going through while he uses Loki, and as such we see an erratic and chaotic design to match that turmoil, rather than the meticulously well thought out Robin Hood. And the best part is that all of this becomes even more convincing when we take a peek at Loki's moveset and how it compares to Robin Hood. Loki takes what moves Robin Hood already had and deletes anything that isn't directly tied to dealing more damage. He completely drops all of the support and instant kill skills that Robin Hood uses and gets rid of all blessed skills. No longer are there any conflicting themes being shown in the moveset, as everything is set up to do damage or make the damage you're already doing hit harder. Our moveset is now Leviton, Megidolaon, Riot Gun, Aegon, Debilitate, and some passives. Passives which mostly boost combat viability through things like tripling his evasion to bless, reducing susceptibility to status effects, and automatically applying Targu Kaja at the start of battle, raising his attack stat. Loki is an absolute killing machine, because he personifies Akechi's violent tendencies and unstable emotional status that lays just beneath his calm, calculating exterior. Between the design and the moves, we can see how this persona crafts a more unstable and devious side of Akechi, and because of this, it stands in stark contrast to the unsettling heroism in Robin Hood. But remember how I mentioned Harrowward a while back? Harrowward is an extremely interesting third tier persona, as he is a true combination of Robin Hood and Loki. While other tier 3 personas revert to their tier 1 themes and inspiration, Harrowward seems to exist somewhere in between Robin Hood and Loki. His design goes back to the body shape of Robin Hood, but it keeps the aggressive and sinister look of Loki. Instead of a Superman-like figure, we now see something more akin to Batman, a much more morally gray symbol, which is absolutely perfect for Akechi in the third semester. During Maruki's arc in Royale, we're reunited with Akechi, and it's during this time that we get to see him come to terms with his actions and find a way forward. This evolution of his character arc leaves him in a strange moral purgatory, where he doesn't exhibit the heroism and justice of the Phantom Thieves, but is also no longer the unstable and murderous pawn used in Shido's game. Instead, what we see is Akechi doing what he believes is right, whether those around him agree or disagree. And Harrowward is the final reflection of those ideals. The dark colors and aggressive design show the more evil parts of his mind, while the body shape and history provide structure for him to express those thoughts. To put things simply, if Robin Hood is lawful good, and Loki is chaotic evil, then I think Harrowward is somewhere in between lawful evil and chaotic good. Now, to be frank, neither category fits perfectly here, but I think that putting him into those alignments gets my point across better. Akechi in the final chapter of the game is operating between the lines of good and evil. All pretenses of justice and heroism are discarded in exchange for a more authentic persona that is specific to Akechi, and I can't think of anything more fitting for his final persona. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you made it this far, then you probably liked what I had to say. So if that's the case, be sure to hit the like button so I know I'm doing something right. Be sure to let me know below what themes, topics, and personas you guys want me to cover next time. I'm thinking of giving Harrowward his own episode of Persona Compendium since I just find him so interesting. So if that's something you want to see me do, then tell me in the comments. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss an upload. Best of all, it's free and you can always unsub later if it doesn't work out. Finally, I also have a Twitter and an Instagram if you would like to hit me up on either of those platforms. Links to those will be below. But with all that YouTube stuff out of the way, I just want to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.